uh, today i will discuss with you atrophic rhinitis so uh, atrophic rhinitis affects the interior of the nose and it is a condition that occurs when the tissues that line the nose known as mucosa and the bone underneath the mucosa they both shrink down so it is a condition when the tissue lining the mucosa that is uh, lining the nose that is mucosa and bone these both tissues shrink and this shrinking leads to leads to widening of the nasal cavities widening of the nasal cavities widening of the nasal cavities so it is a condition when the tissues that line the nose that is mucosa and bone undergo shrinkage and lead to widening of the widening of the nasal cavities this process is known as atrophy and the rhinitis in this case is known as atrophic rhinitis this condition can lead, lead to changes in functions of the nasal passages leading to atrophic rhinitis classification we can classify atrophic rhinitis into primary and secondary the primary rhinitis is mostly known to be idiopathic primary rhinitis is mostly seen in the young people with uh, no history of any infection but it is mostly associated with colonization by klebsiella ozaini as well as some other organisms the primary presenting symptom is foul smelling nasal discharge foul smelling nasal discharge while in case of secondary atrophic rhinitis there is a history of any prior nasal trauma surgery radiation therapy or certain inflammatory conditions like granulomatous diseases as well as uh, we can observe it with syphilis syphilis because in syphilis bone is destroyed and atrophy of the bone occurs due to which widening of the nasal cavities occurs so the primary form is mostly idiopathic and some may say that uh, the most common organism that is responsible for uh, primary atrophic rhinitis is klebsiella ozaini its colonization can lead to atrophic rhinitis uh, and the primary presenting symptom is foul smelling discharge while in case of secondary atrophic rhinitis there is an underlying cause like uh, prior sinonasal trauma surgery radiation therapy and certain inflammatory conditions like granulomatous diseases syphilis etc so uh, the factors that are blamed for the genesis are uh, some infections like i have told you uh, in case of secondary atrophic rhinitis it is uh, syphilis or in case of primary atrophic rhinitis mostly it is idiopathic but inf uh, infection with klebsiella ozaini can lead to atrophic rhinitis autoimmune attacks can lead to atrophic rhinitis chronic sinus infection hormonal imbalance especially in case of females uh, they, they are more prone to primary atrophic rhinitis poor nutritional status heredity and iron deficiency anemia can also be associated with atrophic rhinitis chronic bacterial infections of nose or sinus may be the uh, cause of primary atrophic rhinitis but it is not well established here you can see some clinical features associated with atrophic rhinitis the clinical features that are associated with atrophic rhinitis are anosmia ozaini that is foul smelling from the nose extensive nasal crusting nasal crusting is why because the nasal cavities are enlarged and when the nasal cavities are enlarged then there uh, are dry air currents that are entering in the nasal cavities 
and due to these uh, dry air currents the crusting is observed in the atrophic rhinitis subjective nasal congestion is also observed in alignment of the nasal cavities as i have told you the mucosa the mucosa and bone both are atrophied so when mucosa and bone both are atrophied then obviously the nasal cavities are wider the nasal cavities are then wider so when there is atrophy of the nasal mucosa and bone then there is enlargement of the nasal cavity resorption or absence of the turbinates because there is atrophy of the mucosa and bones and it can this condition can lead to squamous metaplasia of the nasal mucosa squamous metaplasia of the nasal mucosa and this condition uh, can lead to depression because uh, mostly the person is unaware of the foul smelling uh, uh, discharge and it is told to him by uh, or her by other people so it is a depressing condition atrophic rhinitis is uh, uncommon and distinct clinical syndrome of progressive atrophy of the nasal mucosa and this condition is characterized by paradoxical nasal congestion as i have told you and i i have told you that there is thick troublesome nasal secretions and these are complicated by bacterial colonization and infection so there is a uh, progressive atrophy of the nasal mucosa due to which there is nasal congestion as well as thick troublesome nasal secretions i have told you that there are crusts in the nasal cavities and uh, mostly these are complicated by bacterial colonization and infection enlargement of the nasal cavities uh, as i have told you is obvious because of destruction of the nasal mucosa and bones and most patients also have concomitant concomitant sinusitis and thus the disorder is more accurately called atrophic rhinosinusitis furthermore uh, in addition to atrophic rhinosinusitis there is atrophy of the uh atrophy seen in the uh, whole respiratory tract including pharynx and larynx so atrophy of uh, mucosa in these sites is also seen along with the atrophic rhinosinusitis so this is an important uh, thing i should tell you one other uh, uh, clinical feature is bleeding from the nose bleeding from the nose also known as epistaxis occurs because when the dried discharge or crusts are removed then bleeding occurs septal perforation and dermatitis of nasal vestibule can occur but it uh, occurs mostly when there is superimposed infection so it can lead to septal perforation and dermatitis of nasal vestibule the nose may show a sudden nose deformity atrophic rhinitis is also associated with atrophic changes in the pharynx or larynx as i have told you and uh, symptoms uh, associated with pharynx or larynx are also observed hearing impairment can occur due to stachian tube blockage causing middle ear effusion so middle middle ear infection here you can see this is middle uh, ear and here this is stachian tube in the throat so when there is uh, infection in the nose then uh, it can lead to blockage of this stachian tube so ventilation of uh, this middle ear this middle ear ventilation is uh, disturbed due to which middle ear effusion middle ear effusion appears treatment treatment is of two types medical and surgical treatment medical measures include nasal irrigation using normal saline what is the benefit it uh, softens the softens the it softens the crust it softens the crust nasal irrigation and removal of crust using alkaline nasal douches like 280 ml of water 28.4 grams of sodium bicarbonate 28.4 gram of sodium uh, diborate and 56.7 gram of sodium chloride so uh, this is an alkaline nasal douche 
and it is used to irrigate and remove the nasal crust from the wide nasal cavities. 25% glucose in glycerin is given because it prevents the attack of bacteria and local antibiotics like uh, chemicetin and tiocyanus solution that is chloramphenicol and estradiol plus vitamin D2 are given. This antibiotic combination along with estradiol and vitamin D leads to uh, destruction of the Klebsiella ozaini. Klebsiella ozaini is destroyed. Then we can use estradiol spray because some think that primary atrophic rhinitis is due to hormonal imbalances and uh, systemic streptomycin and rifampicin can be used but uh, this combination is mostly used for prophylaxis also. Oral potassium iodide can be given and human placental extract that is in, uh, human placental extract is injected in the submucosa. It is shown that it also helps to treat and prevent this atrophic rhinitis. So uh, the first step is uh, use uh, normal saline to irrigate the nasal uh, mucosa and then irrigate uh, and remove the crust by using alkaline nasal douches then use 25% glucose in glycerin then use antibiotic combination that is uh, chemicetin and tiocyanus solution that consists of chloramphenicol, estradiol and vitamin D then estradiol spray because it may be thought that uh, it, atrophic rhinitis is due to, uh, due to hormonal imbalances then systemic streptomycin and rifampicin therapy can be given oral potassium iodide in, uh, can be given and human uh, placental extract is injected in the submucosa and it is also uh, found to be helpful in uh, treating and preventing the uh, primary atrophic rhinitis Surgical treatment consists of Young's aspiration, uh, operation, modified Young's operation, Wilson's procedure, Wittmark's procedure and other volume reduction procedures like uh, introduction of Teflon uh, in the nasal cavities and therefore the nasal cavities or the volume of the nasal cavities is reduced and denervating operations can also be used. I should explain here a modified Young's procedure. In this, there is elevation of extended uh, perichondrial flap through contralateral hemitransfixion incision. Then, short skin flap is elevated from the intercartilaginous line on the ipsilateral side, and then we apply suture lateral and medial flaps with vacryl. Vacryl is a type of absorbable suture. Then. So the other side is uh, also uh, treated by this modified Young's procedure but within uh, after the 6 months period. It has several advantages like uh, it is easier than uh, Young's procedure, no suture line breakdown, no vestibular stenosis are take on takedown. Disadvantages is it is not possible with large septal defects, does not allow for cleaning, does not allow for periodic examination and recurrence is uh, there are chances of recurrence after flap takedown. So this is all about atrophic rhinitis and I have explained in detail the primary atrophic uh, rhinitis. Thank you for watching.